I want to go backwards just a little bit tonight. I said that we were going to uh, go ahead and get into the last part and the first part of last part of chapter 13 and the first part of chapter 14, but I want to ask you something. As we got into about midstream in chapter 13, I was reading and studying today and throughout these past weeks, and I want to ask you something, and uh, that has kind of bug me and this is it's kind of a simple question but when you listen to something when you actually do listen to something do you really hear it do you really really hear it and the reason that I'm asking you this is because God is asking you to really hear his word. And I, I don't really think we're hearing him. I, I, don't, I really don't think we're really hearing him. Because if we really did we would take this in and we would take this in and we would really be serious about it. Do we really, really see hell in its real format, in its real picture? Do we really see it? And the reason I'm asking you that is because boys this this thing is has got to me there are folks come in here every Sunday and they're leaving here lost dying going to hell And we come in and we've drank our sodas and we've drank our Coca-Colas and we've drank our coffee and we've ate our biscuits and gravy and we leave, we came with a full stomach and we're leaving here and we can't wait to go get another meal. Amen. But do we really think about the folks that are dying, going to hell, that are going out those doors every Sunday, that are dying lost, and they're going to go to hell without God? And I can't save a one of them. And I can't do nothing about it. And God said, so Dean, they're, they're saved by the foolishness of preaching. And Jake, am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Church, am I? Or am I just up here in Moravian Falls just spinning my wheels? Do we really, really care? Because what he said here in verse number 8 and 9 in verse number 13, chapter number 13, he said, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life. Of 
of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. And this is without a doubt the most awesome, inspiring statement in the Word of God. If any man, it's repeated, this invitation is repeated three times. Three times. And the thing about it is, so that faith in Romans 10, 17, and the word of God said, if any man hath an ear, let him hear. And here again in the wedding of a free will election, if any man, if any man, if any man means any man, if any man hath an ear, does not everybody have ears? Yes, but if there are some people who do not hear, although they have ears, there are people who simply do not listen at all. They do not hear. And they just don't care. Oh, they'll, I ain't got my cell phone. It's out in the car. I don't bring it in the church 90% of the time. But you know what we'll do? We'll come in here, we'll fiddle with some, we'll get a song book and we'll fiddle at something or we'll bring a piece of paper and we'll fiddle at something or we'll look down at something or we'll uh, fiddle with something in our pocketbook or we'll fiddle with a piece, we'll, we'll do something to get our mind off, if nothing else, we'll look around and see what else, or look at a child, or we'll get something, we'll get our mind off of the Word of God. And that is what John is trying to, to get people to see. Here in, in this verse of Scripture, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, and he that killeth with a sword must be killed with a sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. He said, now, so now, what we're seeing here, not, I just had to go back. I just had to go back. And... The first beast you looked at here in this passage of scripture. The first beast you looked at here. In verse 11 it says, And I beheld another beast. I want you to notice something. The first beast was what? Let's go back and just rehearse just a minute. The first beast was Satan. Amen. Okay, it says the second beast. I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. The first beast came out of the sea. Amen. Now talk to me. Stay with me. Now we're going to learn something. I want you to hear. I want you to hear. I don't want you to listen. I want you to hear. I want to go in up here and I want to settle in the heart. I want to go in. And I, I don't think it's been, I, I think it's just been a shoot. I think I've been a shooting. And I think I've been aiming like a little boy and his daddy going squirrel hunting. Little boy and his daddy, daddy had a gun. And he was, little boy said, Daddy, why don't you shoot? And he said, well, I'm aiming to. He said, well, you've been aiming all over the tree. I think it's time to shoot. Well, we've been aiming to learn. I can only teach, but I can't learn for you. That's your job. The first beast came out of the sea, had ten horns, 
All right, he came out of the sea. All right, that is Satan, came out of the sea. Second beast, he came out of the earth. He came out of the earth, but I want you to notice the difference before we even try to go on. To learn this thing because this, this, this thing is, this is real. Before God can turn this thing, he has turned it over to Satan. He has turned it over to Satan. This earth is in total control of Satan himself. God has is, is turned it over to him. Now we're in heaven. We're there with him. Okay, but you're, you're out of the picture. But think about hell and think about your children and think about those people that are living here, that are staying here, that are going to hell without God that have heard the word of God and are not going. Your children that have never been saved that are going to burn in an eternal lake of fire forever and ever screaming, Mama, Grandpa, Grandma, I want you to get a picture of those children screaming for you. And you can't reach them, and they can't reach you. I want you to hear this with the heart. Because now's the time we've got to do something about it. we got to do something about it, folks. If we don't, nobody is going to do nothing. Nobody's doing nothing. Our political system could care less about your children. Republicans, Democrats, Independents could care less about your youngins. All they care about is a vote. All right, but the thing about it is, he said the second beast. All right, and another beast came out, but I want you to notice this. He only had two horns. Why? <laughs> Hear me. Why did he have just two horns? He's got two horns for a he's got two horns for a reason. Did you notice there's no crowns? There's no diadems, there's no, there's no jewels, there's no sapphires, there's no, there's no rubies, there's no, there's no political stars, there's nothing about him to draw him, draw the people. Now look what he says. He said two horns like the first one is anti-God. The first one came out opposing God Almighty, came out anti-Christ, anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-God in every way, form, and fashion. That is the devil. Here comes another one out, and he comes out. The first one is anti-Christ and wants the world to know it. Here comes one, and he, the first one, opposes Christ in every way. And here comes one. Everybody got their ears open and hear it. Here comes one posing as Christ. Did you read it? I want this to sink in. I want it to sink in really, really good because he said that this one comes in and beheld two horns like a lamb, but he spake as a what? A dragon. Oh, he's going to love you. Oh, he's going to smooth talk you. But a dragon going to eat you up. A dragon's going to, a lamb's going to get you in. Have you ever, uh, ever been in a, I know y'all don't, you've never pastored a church. But let me just put it like this. 
Come here, Jake. Jake, I, I, I want to tell you something about Jerry. Jerry. You know he's been running around on his wife. I don't want you to say nothing about it, but if you want to tell Fred about it, it's all right. But I think somebody ought to know about that. But see, but don't mention my name. <laughs> don't you say a word about it. See how the elk is started in church. But see, I, I won't stay out of it. See, the ring leader is me. I've done started a whole mess of stuff in a church, but I just sit back and watch it fight. But Jeff, but Jake goes to Fred, and Fred will run over there to Michael and say, Bob, Mike, did you hear about that? Did you hear about Jerry? Jerry goes back in to Preacher Gene. Preacher Gene tells his wife. And Cheryl, she, she and, and Cheryl tells Walmart. And the first thing you know, Walmart puts it on the speaker. And then everybody at Walmart puts it on Facebook. And the next thing you know, Mount Carmel is split and busted. And, Everybody and Jerry and Pat are divorced and there ain't a word of truth in none of it. See how the devil, he, the lamb, started a lie and spake as a dragon. This is how he works. This is how all of this goes. And this year is what he's going to do. And we've got to go on if we're going to get through this thing at all. And he exercises all the power of the first beast. See? See, he poses as a lamb, but he speaks like a dragon. Why? Because he is of the dragon. A leopard can't change its spots. You can't you were born a sinner and you will die a sinner except for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It takes the blood of the Lamb of God to turn you around to keep you out of hell and that is the only thing that's ever going to change you. And the first beast comes out of the sea but the second one comes out of the earth and what is the difference? The sea represents the people of the world. And a great mob of the mankind today is like the surgeon of the restless sea. The great mob, the people are restless. And look at the shooting today. Look at Chicago this week. Look at all the killings and all of this. But the thing about it, but the earth from which a second beast rises is symbolic. Listen to me, listen to me, hear me. It is like Palestine. I run reference, listen. It's like Palestine today and Israel. And the thing about it is, and it is naturally assumed that the second beast comes from Israel. I didn't know that myself. But the thing about it is, he is Masonic or he is a Messiah type person but the thing also and Israel would not accept him unless he had come from their land and was one of them why? because Palestine was a place built out of people that were not they were Arabic and Egyptian and Jews crossed that formed the city of Palestine. Because the Jews, 
the city of Jerusalem when they came out of Egypt. God told them to marry after their own kind. Don't give your daughters to them and don't give your sons to them. You marry after your own kind, but after they got, he said, you go over there and you kill every one of them. But they didn't. And they married some Egyptians and they married the Arabics, they married the Ethiopians, they married, they intermarried in the inner races. And when they did, and when they come to Jerusalem, they formed, they couldn't let them in, so they formed Palestine. And they formed uh, uh, Samaria. And they put them down there. And the Jews didn't have nothing to do with the Palestinians and the Samaritans. What did the woman at the well in John chapter 4? She knew the Jews didn't have nothing to do with the Samaritans. Remember the story? All right, but the thing about it was the two horns like the lamb, this suggests he was imitating Christ. The first beast opposed Christ. He is the Antichrist, and the second beast imitates Christ. And so the thing about it is you'll find this in John chapter 1 and verse number 29. And the thing about it is if they, if he is the counterfeit. Think about it. What does it say over in John chapter uh, 1? In John chapter 1 and verse number 29. Let me find it right quick. John chapter 1 and verse number 29. He said, and the next day John said, Jesus coming unto him, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He is the Lamb of God. All right, what does he say here? He comes to them here, and he says, Behold, he beheld the beast, had two horns, like. Don't you notice this? He didn't say he was a lamb. He said he was like a lamb. You've got to read this carefully. You've got to hear it with your heart. All right? And he doeth, 13, he said he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire to come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man. Boy, where we heard that before. Elijah done it, didn't he? Didn't Elijah do it? Elijah made fire come down. Oh, and I want you, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through this real quickly here tonight. It's called we need, we need to move on. The thing about it is, I want you to remember this. He will never deal with blood. Never, 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 never. The only thing he will deal with is fire. Read this. Okay, and he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. All right? Where do we see an image? They made an image of Baal, didn't they? All right, they, was, they, was, they, they had, went up on the mountain. They was going to worship Baal, wasn't they? That's what they worshiped. All right, but they couldn't get nothing done. But fire didn't come down for them, but fire came down for God's people under the power of of 63 words of God's man after he repaired the altar. And the altar was made unto God and the God of the living and the God of the sacrificial God, the God who is God and there is none other. All right, but let's move on. He said, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. 
How was he given this power? He's given this power through Satan. See, God had turned this power over to the beast. I mean, over to Satan. And Satan had given power unto this image, to this beast. Had the two horns, all right? So they would worship him. And to the image of the beast, and the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Look at this. How many? Now, what happened on Mount Carmel? Let's go back. How many would not worship Elijah's God? What happened to them? How many of them, how many of them did God say if you would not worship, if you would not worship him, what happened to them? 850 of them were killed, wasn't they? Okay, these are killed in reverse because they would not worship Satan's beast. See how the counterfeit, see how this is working in reverse. Now you're going to think this out for a minute, ain't you? I'll give you a minute. It'll, it'll, it'll settle in just a minute. But the thing about it is, folks, this beast with two horns is going to scare the living devil out of a bunch of people. No. It's going to scare the living devil in them. That's what it's going to do. Because they don't want to be killed. This is what's going to happen. What did it do to Elijah? Jezebel put him on the run. That was God's man. Boy, that old, my, that old woman, buddy, she put him, I mean, she put the skids under him. Buddy, he went up there and hid in a cave, didn't he? How many, how many did God, how many did God have to show him that never bowed a knee. Yes. Was it 70,000 or 700,000? I forgot now. How many was it, Jake? It's 70,000 or 700,000 that had never bowed a knee to Baal. But God had a bunch as a slew. They wasn't all Baptists either. But buddy, they had never bowed a knee to the devil. Buddy, I'm going to tell you right now, God's got a bunch of people serving him. Buddy, we need to get out there and get, we need to get tied into that bunch that's serving God. But we need to get tied into that crowd and get out of the cave. We act like we're in the cave the dispensation, I guess would be the word. But the thing about it is that all of this, he is, he is all of this and more. But let's, let's move on just a little bit. I've got about two or three minutes. But in, in Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 15, he says, Beware of false prophets which come unto you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. The second beast is the, he's nothing but a counterfeit prophet of Satan, he, uh, he's uh, for God. And the thing about it is, this second beast, it, it, it takes two men to fulfill a position. And brother, he's fulfilling his position. He's going to back up everything that Satan does. 
And in this, in this course, again the Lord Jesus said in Matthew 24, in verse number 24, he said, For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. The false prophet is a sort. Uh, it's just like if John the Baptist were a false prophet. He could go out here. Let, let's look at the false people and the false doctrines today. I know we're taping this or putting it on CD. We've had a young person that has been attending some of our services here. And they are joining and going to and becoming part of another sect. And it's sad. It is sad, sad, sad. And folks, I'm going to tell you right now, what we need to do and what we need to understand is we as a nation are losing hold on America. We're losing hold on Wilkes County. Jehovah's Witness and Mormons, the Unitarians, the New World Order. Do you think it's not coming into Wilkes County? Do you think this Rainbow Center on all of this stuff is not coming into Wilkes County? And they saying it's all right to do a lot of these things, these condoms and these your uh, the uh, birth control and all of this stuff that they're passing out to these young children? Do you think all of this stuff is all right in our schools? For our children nine years old and up? God help us in America, but God help us in Moravian Falls. But the thing about it is right here in this, and it says in the closing remarks, he said, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. And now, but look what he said in verse number 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, the rich and poor, the free and bond, to receive the mark of their, the mark in their, right hand or in their foreheads. Did you get this? He causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive. He causeth. He had the power. What are you talking about? He, he had that you could either take the mark or you could die. Which one do you think they'd do? They're going to take the mark. And that is, that is so sad. And he said in verse number 17 and 18, I know it's a couple of minutes after eight, and so that no man might buy or sell, save he that hath that had, that is in the present tense, had he had the mark, they had to see that mark, that had to be very visible. You could not get sick help if you were dying, husband or wife. Say you took it and your wife didn't, your wife's going to die right in front of your eyes. 
Your family's going to die right in front of your eyes. You ain't getting no help for them. You're not receiving nothing for your family if they did not take the mark. Your family is going to die right in front of your face. And they cannot, or the name of the beast, or the number of the name, of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding, that's hearing, hearing, hearing from the heart, hearing and understanding from the heart. That goes all the way back to verse number nine. And I, I wept. I mean, this broke my heart. Here at Mount Carmel do we hear. After all these years of standing here, do we really hear? Do we hear with the heart? Do I really preach with the heart? Am I doing right with the heart? Or am I just coming in and have we got in a routine? And he said, count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man. Man's number six. And he said, and his number is six hundred and three score and six. That is six, six, six. You must have it. 